the technology sector is obsolete. There may have been a time when we could refer to technology as a sector. So, somewhere that was distinct and apart from others. The technology sector. What is that? But is that something that we can really say today? Remember when we referred to technology in these ways? The brick. How many of us do you think could do without these today? Technology has transformed the way we access everyday products and services. When was the last time you rented a video from the Blockbuster store? Remember the Blockbuster video store? <laughs> Well, good luck in even finding one of those stores because today it's all about Netflix and chill. And uh, paper maps, anybody still use those? All right, okay. <laughs> well, just so you know, paper maps are now apps, Google Maps and GPS tracker, and um, newsflash CDs. CDs are fast becoming relics of the past. The music plays on with Spotify and iTunes. So, if technology is so intertwined in our everyday lives, can we really refer to technology as a sector? I say no. Technology is in fact everywhere. It's ubiquitous, and being able to navigate this new smart world, a world where terms like artificial intelligence, virtual reality, Bitcoin, will become everyday jargon, is as essential as knowing how to read. Technology has, in effect, transitioned from segmentation to integration. So if we're consuming more technology, then we must be creating more technology, right? Who do you think is creating this technology? Be honest. How many people saw someone who looked like this? Or this? How many people saw someone who looked like this? Only one in four tech jobs is held by a woman. Okay. So you may say, well, why does it matter if women don't hold tech jobs? Well, I have some very good reasons to share with you. One, tech graduates earn just under 100,000 US dollars globally. They get to work in places like Silicon Valley. They wear hoodies and jeans to work. They take their dogs with them. They get to hang out at the gym in the middle of the day. Who wouldn't want that life, right? But technology is also going to be used to make life-changing advances in areas like medicine, the design of smart cities, self-driving cars, climate resilience solutions. If women make up 50% of the population, we need to be at the table when solutions are being developed to meet the needs of a very diverse society. Imagine 50% of the population missing. With women at the table, we will have smarter conversations, better ideas, more creativity. Diversity breeds innovation and inclusion. Women have to take it up, to live it up. This, yeah, you can agree with me. <laughs> I agree with you. This 
underrepresentation of women at the workplace, though, doesn't just happen at that stage when they're in work mode, but it happens at every stage of the tech journey. Globally, only 3% of girls entering university are choosing information and communication technology, ICT. At the University of the West Indies, in the 2018 class, the graduating class, in the computer studies department, only 30% were female. These numbers really woke me up. As a Caribbean woman, I want Caribbean girls to be bold, be brave, to dream big and experience unimaginable prosperity. Girls just have to take it up, to live it up. So here's what I did. In 2017, I got together with my She Leads It co-founder, Nicole, and another like-minded sister, and we decided that if we were going to disrupt the future of women in tech, tech we had to start with girls. So, we created the Girls in ICT Day Caribbean Hackathon. All right, okay. Red alarm, red alarm, hackathon, hack, bad. No, just so you know, we weren't asking the girls to steal anybody's data, okay? Our hackathon was all about good. So a hackathon is an event where people come together using technology for creative problem solving. It's usually male dominated. But our hackathon is different. Because girls have to take it up, to live it up. This year, over 600 girls representing high schools, colleges, universities from Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Jamaica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines came together, not just Instagramming, Facebooking, Snapchatting, but actually creating the next Facebook. They opened up their laptops and they dived into problem solving around an issue that was very important to them. The safety of girls and women. Hashtag, safe girls, safe future. I hear an amen in the house. We asked them to focus specifically on girls being Home safe, street safe, relationship safe, and cyber safe. At the end of the day, they pitched their solutions to a team of judges, and here are some of the mobile apps they created. Quick alert, if women felt that they were at risk of domestic violence or sexual assault, they could make immediate contact with emergency contacts and security personnel by just shaking their phone and tapping the emergency pop-up icon. Plate alert. Girls can access information and passenger reviews on taxi drivers before actually getting into the cab using the license plate number so that they can be street safe when taking public transportation. Glam 99 or Glam 99, a, 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 an accessory collection that has an embedded microchip, you know, like in your ear, earring here, you could just tap it. It sends a link directly to your mobile phone if women and girls feel that they are in any way in danger or in an unsafe space. It will send an SOS message directly to your emergency contacts to the security personnel, and it will pinpoint your location. Those were some of the amazing things that happened at the hackathon. So, with all of this, you must be wondering, so what is it that happens in the life experiences of women and girls that make them not want to learn and work in tech? Well, I have two words for you. Gender bias. 
Throughout their lives, girls and boys receive very strong messages from influencers that technology is a man's domain and girls don't belong. Families. Parents teach boys to construct things, put things together, pull them apart. You remember the juice box and bottle stopper trains? Girls are taught to play with dolls and tea sets. Teachers. Teachers encourage boys to take tech subjects. And the few girls that slip through are told, you are one of the boys. When all along they've been told, be a girl. This can create all sorts of confusion and insecurities with girls around their femininity. Companies. Companies pay women in startup tech jobs globally anywhere from 4 to 45 percent less than men. Let that sink in. A woman is earning half of what a man is earning somewhere in the world for doing the same job. Women oftentimes meet the maternal wall where their commitment and their competence to their job is questioned because they choose to have a child. They feel isolated and alone without a supportive network of role models and mentors, and no surprises here, they're more likely to leave the job. At our hackathon, these influencers, they have to show up, but they have to show up with a very different message one that says, you are enough and you belong. Girls, take it up to live it up. So here's what we did. Parents had to give their express approval, permission for the girls to attend the hackathon. They had to actively opt in. Teachers, teachers had to train the teams, select the teams to start, and then come with them to support them during the event. Companies, we couldn't have the event without companies. They, provide, they, they provided all of the money that we needed to have the hackathon. They were visible during the day as tech speakers, role models, and they provided prizes. Tech gadgets, cash, bursaries, internships, sending a very strong message to the girls, we want you in tech and you should be rewarded for the work you do. So, what were some of the wow moments? One team of girls, they were so empowered and inspired by what they had experienced that day that they decided that they were going to go back to school and organize their own hackathon with the support of their teachers. Two companies, two big companies, awarded internships to two of the university teams. At the end of the paid summer internship, one company extended the internship throughout the school year and hired one of the girls as a design engineer. Shaguanas North Secondary School, right here in Trinidad and Tobago. Shout out to Shaguanas North. Shaguanas North Secondary School. They won the hackathon in 2017 and 2018. Both years. They decided that they were going to enter their winning cyberbullying app in a local tech startup competition. Guess what? Out of 48 submissions, they came first. They won $10,000 US from an international funding agency to take their app through the development phase. They weren't happy about being local, so they decided to go global. So they entered the cyberbullying app in a global tech startup competition organized by one of the world's largest tech companies. 
and out of hundreds of submissions, they placed in the top 50. That's Shaguan of North. <laughs> These are some of the amazing things that happen when you create opportunities for girls in tech and just move out of their way. Imagine, imagine a world where girls and boys are free from bias and boxes, free to be anything they want to be. Where instead of you can't, it's I can. Where instead of you don't belong, it's I claim my space, I am bold, I am brave, I am enough. This is a world that I want to live in. Do you? Girls, take it up to live it up. <laughs>